Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level Statistics Review video. So today I'm just going to be reviewing um, the topic of statistics. I'm not going to look at any examples. If you'd like to see some Leaving Cert Higher Level exam question examples, I've linked the video in the description below. If you'd like to extend to look at inferential statistics, I've also linked those videos in the description below. So as part of statistics exam questions, you'll need to understand what data means. You'll need to understand your measures of central tendency. That's mean. And um, mean has the symbol mu as well as x bar. We'll get into that a little bit more detail when we look at inferential statistics. Um, we also have median and mode. We have measures of spread. So we have three range, interquartile range and standard deviation, which is given by sigma. At correlation, so being positive or negative, the correlation coefficient. We also have within that the scatter plot. The scatter plot, we can plot then a line of best fit, and we are often asked about correlation versus causality. Um, we'll also look a little bit about different types of sampling, and there are five main charts that you'll need to know: bar chart, pie chart, a line plot, histogram, and stem and leaf. And the last thing we'll look at are distribution. So the normal distribution, which is the symmetrical one and some skewed distributions. So in statistics, when we talk about data, we just mean information. And this information can be split into different types of information or types of data. So the two higher level, the two high level types of data, which you would have seen at junior cert, are numerical data and categorical data. These are also known as quantitative, so that's numerical, so think about quantity, quantitative numbers, and qualitative, so that's more of the words. Underneath quantitative, we have discrete and continuous. So discrete means that there are jumps, continuous means it, all the numbers uh, can be used. So an easy way to remember this would be to talk about it as numbers that you count or that you measure. So discrete numbers you count, continuous you measure. So for example, discrete, the number of students in a class. Continuous will be something like your height. So it's something you measure. Underneath qualitative or categorical data, we have what's called nominal and ordinal. I always find it easier to work with ordinal. That means some word that has an order to it. So like small, medium, large, first, second, third, higher, lower foundation, all these kind of words have an inbuilt order. And then nominal would be unordered. So just imagine colors or anything like that. There's no real order to them. Um, also under data, we have what's known as primary data and secondary data. You would have seen something like this in other subjects like history. Primary data is something that you collect firsthand, while secondary data is where you get it from a source like Google or a book. So somebody has already done the work. It is second hand. When we talk about the population in statistics, we're talking about everybody that you want to in understand or include in your study. Um, it's very accurate, but it can be very time consuming and expensive. So we have um, one survey which is um, given to the whole population and that's called the census. Um, the census does take quite a lot of planning. It happens um, every few years. Um, it can't happen every year. Just It's just too time consuming and expensive. So what do we do in between that? Well, we can use a sample. So when we talk about samples, we're talking about taking a piece of the population and allowing that to represent the population itself. Now, it's not a fantastic way to do it. It's not going to be as accurate, but it will be a lot less expensive and it'll also be a lot less time consuming. When we talk about samples, there are a few different types of samples. So we four given here um, and we'll look at samples in a lot more detail and how we can make the data collected from samples a lot more accurate when we talk or when we look at inferential statistics. So measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. The formula for mean is in your log tables, but generally students know you add and divide. Uh, so you add all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. What I will say here, if you're revising the course having finished it, um, you should have then already seen 
improbability expected value. So expected value is just another way to say mean. We see expected value when we're, to work, when we're working in probability, but it's called the mean when we work in, um, in statistics. When we talk about these measures of central tendencies, these are all averages. So when you're in primary school, you probably learn mean it as the average, but there are many, many averages. So although I've said that the mean is the average of the data set, I use that in terms of what you would have probably learned as the average. Um, we can also have mean of a sample. Again, that's getting into the inferential statistics. We then have three measures of spread that you're required to know. So spread is how spread out the data is. So we have range, interquartile range and standard deviation. Um, it's important that you can calculate standard deviation using your calculator. Generally at higher level, they'll ask you to use your calculator or otherwise, so you can use the long method, but really there is no point. I'm not gonna cover calculator here, but I will link in the description below some videos which go through how to calculate um, mean, standard deviation and correlation coefficient. Um, using your calculator. I'll try to find, we have old Casio, new Casio and Sharp. I'll do my best to find as many videos as I can. So um, interquartile range is one that can be a little bit challenging, but if you break it down, inter between quartile means quarters. So if you take your data and we split into quarters, so this is demonstrated underneath in this lovely diagram. So we have the lower quart, the lowest value, which is Q0, that's the bottom. And we then go lower quartile. The second quartile, Q2, is actually our median, the middle. Then we have an upper quartile and then the highest value. The interquartile range is between Q3 and Q1. The reason the two outer quarters are excluded are to, well, is to take account of any outliers. So what happens is if you take the range, which is the difference between the highest and the lowest, an outlier, so a data point that does not kind of fit in the data could cause a big problem. Interquartile range ignores these, so um is a better gives you a better sense of the data if there is outliers. Uh, this is a standard deviation formula in your log tables. Make sure you know where it is and make sure you know how to use that to calculate standard deviation and um, the long way if required. However, like I said, work with your calculator if you can. So standard deviation, if you take any normal data set, so we have two normal data sets here, a standard deviation is how far the data sits away from the middle or the mean. So um, something that has a small standard deviation, it's quite this, it's quite a narrow curve as you see here on the left. If there's a larger standard deviation, it's quite, but it's a much flatter curve and it's a lot more spread out. So this leads nicely into our distributions. So we have the normal distribution, which again, we see a lot more of an inferential statistics. We have this lovely symmetrical bell-shaped curve. And what's important to note here is that the mean, the median and mode all appear at the same place, which is dead in the center. We then have two skewed distributions. Skewed to the left means the tail is to the left. It's also known as negative skew. Um, we have the mode, and I will always try to identify the mode first. Mode means the most. So when we're dealing with these kind of distribution curves, the mode is that tallest point. If you go from the tallest point, you'll notice that actually they're in the same order. So it goes mode and then median and then mean along the tail. And if you look at the right skew, it happens the same way. Go get your mode, then go around along the tail, median and mean. That actually goes the backwards um, of, uh, um, what am I trying to say, uh, in alphabetical order. So it's the opposite alphabetical order. So mean, median, mode, that's alphabetical order. It goes mo me mode, median, mean. So just a way to remember it. So then we have co correlation. So it's a way of understanding, is there a relationship between two data or two data points? So because these come in pairs, we talk about by various data. We have what are called scatter plots to help us. And with correlation, we can have positive correlation, negative correlation, or no correlation.
So here are some um, scatter plots to show us how we have no correlation, so there's no real trend. A moderate or maybe weak positive correlation, so there's a general upwards trend. A perfect positive correlation is where there's a really clear um, upwards trend. Moderate or weak negative correlation, there's a downwards trend. And then perfect negative correlation is where there is quite a clear downwards trend. For a higher level, you are required to be able to not only identify a correlation coefficient roughly, but also calculate it. And um, again, make sure you know how to do this calculation on your calculator. So correlation coefficient is given by OR and it's between minus one and one. Sometimes students get confused and think that the correlation coefficient and slope are the same. Now, when we have positive correlation, yes, that would have aligned with positive slope, but that is where the similarity ends. It goes no further because slope, remember slope is tan, it can take any number, it can be as big as you want, while correlation is bounded between minus one and one, it cannot go bigger. So what the correlation coefficient measures is the linear relationship, but it is strongly affected by outliers, so it can really skew your results. So positive correlation will be plus one, negative correlation minus one, and then somewhere in there. So if you had like 0 0.2, that's weak positive. Um, no correlation is or equals zero. So just I've mentioned outliers a few times. So um, the bigger the sa sample of data, the less affected the correlation coefficient is by an outlier. And the smaller the data set, the more affected it is by um, outliers. As always, one data point has a bigger effect when it is a smaller data set. So that is just a really quick overview on um, the normal normal statistics, so the non-inferential statistics part of the Leaving Cert Higher Level course. And um, since the inferential statistics has come in in 20. 2015 2015 when it came in 2015 we haven't really seen a lot of the other statistics asked at the same level that it was however never say never and make sure that you are absolutely fine with how to do it so like i said links in the description below of some videos that will go along with this